You see little kingfish here hunting along the edge of this ledge. And quite a turbulent area along this rocky ledge in the wave zone. Drifting over the drop off, I discovered these little canyons in deeper water looking up towards the surface, the topography becomes quite dramatic. We begin to see more traditional reef life in the few meters of water here. In the sandy gullies, little pockets of grey grunter hunt for little tube worms and shrimps that are kicked up from the sand. shoal of yellowfin kingfish, some of the smaller predators that work the deeper sections of Jessup Point. A pair of devil firefish floating in the current here as they do. And a brief visit on the outside drop off by a small loggerhead turtle which flits off fairly rapidly. Right at the end of the strip of rock that starts in Jessa Point, a little male boxy escorts us off the tip of Quartermile Reef and onto the sand. What we wanted to do is catch the, the high tide, which was at six o'clock. And what we didn't quite realize that at six o'clock in this part of the world, it's still pitch black. Basically what we ended up doing was a, was a night dive. We dropped down into the heads. The, the current was still pushing quite strongly into the lagoon, as you can see by the particles moving past the camera. But an interesting start to the day and start to the dive. We passed a couple of ledges down to the bottom, which ends off at about 12 to 13 meters. And we found quite a few different fish species down here big groups of uh, carrying teen were milling about the, the pinnacles that you find here. We found quite a few black tails still tucked under their caves. Obviously this time of the day is pretty much uh, feeding time for a lot of the pelagic animals. These guys were pretty intent in staying close to their caves if not within their caves. Some of these caves are pretty big here on the heads and uh, quite intimidating when you swim up towards them. I went into one particular one and found a bit of a disturbing sight. This was the remains of a very large octopus. It may have something to do with the temperature. On the bottom, within these caves, you quite often as well find very interesting little invertebrates like these nudibranchs. This guy was battling along the bottom with quite a strong surge and, and the strong current pushing into the, into the estuary. As time went by, we slowly started to get more and more into a bit more calmer water. You can see by the tsunami, the, the current had slowed down a bit and uh, we managed to start focusing a bit more on the reef. And the reef here is pretty impressive. There are a lot of different sponges and little soft corals that you find within this area, giving the reef a huge amount of color. I 
And then after the dive, making our way back up to the surface once again, I uh, bumped into one of the common cuttlefish here. And we've been seeing quite a few of these animals in, in the Nasna estuary. This guy was displaying all his tricks and changing color and texture. Interesting to note how he uses that skirt around his body to, to stabilize himself. Very nervous looking animal, looks like he's ready to scoot off in any second. Blending in extremely well with his surroundings, bit of rubble on the bottom. So it was a really interesting and different dive for us. The standard issue potato bass comes in to vet our presence here on this reef. This one's about 1.2 meters long. 10 to 2 by a juvenile golden kingfish. The first features we came across were these little groups of small coral pinnacles. Under one of these, the same bass with the same little kingfish in attendance. Another thing that we really like about Nine Mile is the detail that one gets on the surface of the reefs. Here a, a piece of black coral, but surrounding it, you, you literally can't look at one square centimeter without seeing something different. The topography started to get more pronounced and panning up from the sand, up the drop off, we came to this beautiful arch. Amazing structure, probably 15 feet high from the surface of the reef. Covered with all sorts of hard and soft corals. We came across an octopus that was sidling around the entrance to a hole, perhaps a little bit nervous that there was an eel lurking inside. You can see the amazing detail on this animal. It keeps changing color and texture. The structure got more pronounced as we drifted south. Far bigger swim throughs along the drop off of Nine Mile here. And in the end, we never quite made it to the green tree. There was too much for us to see. I did find this half destroyed specimen. We'll save the green tree for the next Nine Mile Chronicle.